cash more often. Therefore, if we put the cash in there first, then it'll tell us what the credit and debit will be. And then we just need to figure out what the other account is that we are going to post to. So we pay cash for employees to employees. So what type of account would that, that be if we look at our chart of accounts, which we should always have open? And it's going to be down here. It's going to be some kind of expense. In this case, it's wages expense. So here's our expenses. Expenses only go one way. They go up. They have debit balances. We already know that we're going to debit it because we had to credit cash. But we also know that wages have debit balances. They only go up. And the way we make things go up is we do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it above here in cell C11. Right click and paste it. One, two, three. We are then going to post this out. So I can put my cursor in the expense in cell H12 equals point to that 600. That's going to make the uh, expense go up. It's going to bring net income down there. So net income, remember, is calculated by income minus expenses. This is the credit minus the debit. The credits are winning by 9,004 in this case. We're out of balance because we haven't posted the other side of the entry. That's going to go to cash. There's something in cash already. Therefore, we can double click on this account, go to the end of it. We note what's in there now, this cash account, this cash account. I'm going to go to the end of the eight plus. Then we're going to point to the next cash account here in E12 and then enter. That brings this balance down, puts us back in balance here. Then the question is, what happens to our accounting equation? Once again, we can look up here because it's calculating for us. If I highlight these and delete and look at the assets, then it goes to there. If I undo reposting, it goes from 110 to 1094. Therefore, it decreased. That makes sense because we paid the cash. So cash went down. Therefore, assets went down. Then we're going to take a look at liabilities. Nothing's in there. So liabilities must remain the same. No effect. And that means that if this went, this went down, then this must be going down as well. We can double check that by looking at the equity though and de deleting this. It's at 110. If we undo it, it then goes to 1094, decreasing. Therefore, this goes down. Looking at D then, we have received cash for work that will be done in the future. So first question, is cash affected? Yes. Uh, in this case, we received cash. So if we look up here, we can see cash. Cash has a debit balance represented by the fact that it does not have brackets. Other, unlike credits, which do have brackets, we need to make it go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is. That's debit. So we're going to debit it again. So I'm going to copy cash. I'm going to put it in C14. Right click, paste one, two, three. Then we're going to go in the debit column and put in our 15,000 in D14. Enter. If we debit something, then we're also going to have to credit something for the same amount. I'm going to represent a credit with a negative 15,000 underneath it and in the credit column. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to format with brackets and uh, uh, format in brackets in this way. Then the only question is, what do we credit here? Why are people going to pay us cash of 15,000? We might say because we earned revenue like before, but in this case, once again, we haven't yet re-earned the revenue. We've received the cash, but we haven't yet earned the revenue. It's really going to go to the liability. We're going to credit the liability account. Why? Because we owe something in the future. What do we owe our service or that 15 back? So this liability account, the liabilities have a credit balance, which we will see after we post it, and it's going to go up. So how do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case is another credit. So we're going to increase the liability account in this case with a credit because liabilities accounts have a credit balance and therefore crediting a credit balance account is doing the same thing to it, which will make it go up. So I'm going to right click copy, right click paste one, two, three, then we can post this out. So I'm going to go over here to H5, something's in it. I'm going to double click on that. And we can see all the cash accounts are in there. Note that if this got deleted, then what we'd have to do is just hit equals. And there's a cash account plus there's a cash account plus there's a cash account. That brings us back to where we were. Then we'd have to say plus this cash account here and enter. So that, that will bring us up here. There's the 124.4. Then we're going to post the unearned revenue in h9 so we're in h9 equals we're going to point to the credit 
So this is a credit balance account. It's going to go up in the credit direction to 15 and put us back in balance here. So we hit enter up to 15, back to green zeros down here. Then we can see what happens to our accounting equation. Once again, if we delete this, we'll see what happens to assets. It goes to here. We're at 109.4. If we repost by undoing, it goes up to 124.4. That makes sense because we got cash. Cash is an asset. Therefore, we increased. Then we can take a look at liabilities. Liabilities, something happened here now. So I can delete this and say, okay, liabilities are at zero. If I undo it, it went up to 15 went up in the credit direction because liabilities are credit balance accounts. So liabilities are increasing. That means there must be no effect to equity, none. And we can check that again. We can say, okay, if I delete that, we're at 109.4. If I undo it, we're at 109.4. Then we're going to take a look at the, at the E, paid cash for utilities. So is cash affected? Yeah, we paid cash. So cash, we look over here, has a debit balance. If we paid it, it must be going down. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it as what it is. That's a debit. Therefore, we're going to credit cash. So I'm going to put my cursor on F5, right-click, copy. There's the E. I'm going to put it under the E in column in cell C18. Right-click, paste it, one, two, three. We're going to put it in the credit side in column E, negative 750. Enter, and that will format for us. Now, no, we're all, I'm going to think about cash first, even though it goes on the bottom. Then on the top, in the same row as E, we'll type the 750 there. And there we have it. Now, the only question is, what do we debit? And that would be utilities. So if we take a look at our chart of accounts, we look for something with utilities. We have utilities expense. Utilities is something we expended in order to help us generate revenue in the same time period. Therefore, it's an expense. If we look at all the expenses, they all only go one way. They're all debit balances. They only go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is to make something go up. It's a debit. Therefore, we're going to debit it again in order to make it go up. So I'm copying that, pasting it in C17 like so. Then we'll post this out. So I'm going to put my cursor here to post it in H13 equals. I'm going to point to the 750 utilities, bring in utilities up to 750 putting us out of balance there, bringing net income down. So note that net income went down by that 750 because net income is revenue minus expenses, the credit being a negative number in this case, but we're thinking of it as a credit, minus six minus 750 gives us eight, uh, six, five, zero. Then we're out of balance because if we add the debits and credits, meaning the debit minus the credit minus the credits minus the credits minus plus the debit plus the debit, we're off by 750, which of course is this 750 here. Then we're going to go to cash, going to double click on it because there's something in it. Go to the end of it, plus, and then we'll point to that cash, 750, and enter. Now we can think about what happens to our accounting equation. So once again, what happens to assets? I could delete it and say, okay, we're at 124.4. If I undo that, we're at 123,650. So it made it go down in this case, which makes sense because we paid cash. Cash is an asset. Therefore, we decreased the assets. What happens to liabilities? Well, I can delete this and say liabilities are at 15. If I undo that, we're still at 15. Therefore, no effect here, none. And so if this went down and this doesn't have any effect and to remain in balance, then this must go down. We can double check that though by Deleting this, seeing 109.4 undo, it goes to 108.650, it went down. That makes sense because we expensed something. Expenses are part of equity, which is all of this. So we're going to say that this must have decreased. Last one, cash paid for supplies. So once again, is cash affected? We look at the cash count. Yes, it is because cash is going down because we paid something. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite as what it is. Cash is a debit balance represented by the fact that it does not have brackets here. And we're going to then do the opposite, which would be a credit. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that in C21, paste it one, two, three. Then we'll put, notice it's on the bottom. We're going to put it in column E with a negative 350. So, and then we just hit enter, we get the brackets. Then we're going to put the debit in D20, 350 and enter. And then all, the only question is, what do we debit? Well, we paid for supplies in this case. If we look at our chart of accounts and look where supplies is, it's up here. 
and it's up here in the assets section and the green section rather than what we might expect to see it down here in the expenses. Why is it an asset and not an expense? Because in this case, first we're going to record it as an asset because we have not yet used it. Then once we use it, we will expense it and we'll add a supplies expense down here as we use the supplies. So first when we buy it, we're going to say it's an asset. If we look here, we can say assets all have debit balances so far and therefore we need to make it go up because we got more of them. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So I'm going to copy that, paste it one, two, three here. Then we can record this. I'm going to go to the supplies account in H7 equals, and we can point to that 350. It's going to make the supplies go up in the debit direction from 0 to 350. Puts us out of balance here. Our accounting equation is out of balance up here. Then we're going to post the other side to cash. There's a lot in cash, so I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it, and we can see everything that's in there. Uh, these accounts are obviously in there already. Cash is being affected every time. We're focusing on cash in this here. So we're going to say plus. We're going to point to the 350 and enter. Then we're back in balance. And we can take a look at our accounting equation. Once again, is there an effect? What was the effect on assets? Well, if we delete it, we're at 23650. If we undo, we're still at 23650. Why? But would that be? We know that cash went down this time, and usually when that goes down, then assets go down. But we know that this time supplies went up, and all of these are assets. So we're still at 23,650 because assets went down and supplies went up. They're both assets. Therefore, the accounting equation, there's no effect, none effect here. That's why the accounting equation is not quite as effective as debits and credits because we could end up with transactions like this that don't tell us as much information in the accounting equation also note that the income statement down here is not broken out as thoroughly or as easily in a debit and credit system we can then see what happens to net income at the same time in the same format in the same trial bound a little bit more easily than if we were to do everything in terms of just the accounting equation